Hi everyone, I want to show you how to make a really simple puppet that can move its mouth and all you need is a single piece of paper. You can hold it like this or like this. What you do is fold it along the parallel like so, about as wide as three of your fingers and then keep folding it over on itself like this and then fold off the extra at the end. Now the side that has the seam on it, lay that down so the smooth side is up. Now, fold it over like so. So you'll have a V shape. Now fold one side down. Then fold the other side down. To make an M shape like this. Then fit two fingers into one end. And your thumb into the other. Now there's a shortcut I'll show you too. For that first step, instead of folding it, you can actually just roll it into a tube like this. And then flatten it. And then you make that V shape and turn it. Into the M. Then fit two fingers into one end and your thumb into the other. And now we have a little puppet that can open and close its mouth. And I'll just take a pencil I'll draw some eyes on here. So now I have this really simple puppet here, and I want to talk a little bit about lip syncing. You may have heard that term before. Lip sync is short for lip synchronization, and synchronization means having something happen at the same time, or having your lips synchronized with, in this case, the puppet's lips. So when you move your mouth, you move your fingers at the same time to make the puppet's mouth move the same way. Now, when we make sounds, our lips make all kinds of different shapes. If we make an mmm sound or closed, if we make an ooh sound, they make a little circle. The puppet can't do that. It can only open and close its mouth. But if you stand in front of a mirror with your puppet and you watch your mouth and you watch the puppet's mouth, if you just focus on how much your mouth opens when you make different sounds, our imagination will do the rest on the puppet. Now I only drew two eyes on this puppet with a pencil, but you can decorate it any way you want to. You can use markers or crayons, you can draw a tongue in there or teeth, you can glue things on, you can glue, uh, you can glue eyes on or fur, you can even add a body to your puppet. And I wanted to make a, a fancy one, so I took a, a red piece of paper and, uh, and, I made, and I made the basic puppet shape, and I thought I could make a body with uh, an old pair of socks. So I took a pair of socks and I cut one end off because I thought it looked like a sweater. If I slide my arm through this and fit the puppet's head into it, it could look like a sweater. And with the other sock, I'll sew two straight lines and then I'll cut in between them and these will be the sleeves. inside the sleeves. I think the cardboard tube from this coat hanger is just about the right width for arms. I'll stitch them to the sock and slide the sleeves over them. I thought I would make this into a friendly little monster. So I'll fold these corners in to make nostrils. Now I'm going to use a little bit of glue to hold my puppet together. And I have these googly eyes I thought would look neat. I want the puppet to have eyelashes, so 
I'll take some black paper and cut out these shapes and I'll glue the eyes on here. And I would like the eyes to stand up a little bit from the rest of the head, so maybe I could fold a piece of paper and glue it on. Well, the head is kind of curved, so I might have to make two pieces of paper. It would be nice to curve the lower jaw, too. I wonder if I glue these corners together. Maybe I can trim them a little bit. And I think I'll put sharp teeth on the lower jaw. I'll cut out a pink shape for inside the mouth. And I don't want the paper teeth to get crushed, so I'll position them just outside the top of the jaw. some hands. I'll put a little pocket on the hand where I can insert a stick to control it, but I can also take the stick away if I don't want the stick to be there. So here's my puppet, and I thought this puppet should be a little kid monster, a young monster. So I got some friends to help me with the voice, and let's see how I do with the lip syncing. Lucy, tell me about your favorite book. It's Miss Mouse Girl, Miss Mouse Guide. Oh, what do you love about it? How Preston Robinson draws um, Sally and it cakes so small. Oh, let me see. Oh, she barely pops up over the desk. What happens in this story? Um... So everyone is hurting each other, and Sally McCabe notices everything, but no one notices Sally McCabe. So at the end of the book, Sally McCabe makes a big change. Oh, that sounds really good. How does this book, like, how does reading this book make you feel? Strong and brave. And really good and happy. Now I'm going to show you my amazing, very best favorite page. What? My very best favorite page. Why is that your very best favorite? Because they're showing their grandparents what they did all night. Oh, and what did they make? Can you describe Antarctica. it? Antarctica. Antarctica? That is so cool. What are all those little dudes down in the bottom? Penguins. So Zachary, what book do you have there? This. What book is it? It's Pooh Bear. And why do you like that book? Because Daddy reads it. And what are the stories about? It's about Pooh Bear and Piglet and Christopher Robin and Rabbit. And who are some other friends? Pooh Bear and Piglet and Christopher Robin and Rabbit and who else? <gasps> Owl. Maisie, what's one of your favorite books? Moomin. Moomin? Like yeah. this Moomin book? What book? What Moomin book is this? The Treasure Map. Oh, Moomin and the Great Treasure Hunt? Yeah. What do you love about that book? Because it has the Treasure Map. 
Oh, it has a treasure map? Yeah. What's the treasure? I'll show you the treasure. Jewelry. Jewelry? Yeah. Whoa. Who finds the treasure? Mailman, mailman. Who's your favorite character in that book, Mace? Mailman, mama, mailman, mama. I thought you might like to help me with the voices, too. So, grown-ups, if you have any video or audio files that you think would make a good soundtrack for another lip sync video with this puppet, you can send them to this email address. And I'll pull some audio clips to use in the soundtrack of my next lip sync monster video. You can send a video that you already have, or you can interview your child about something that's interesting for them to talk about, or your child might have uh, ideas about what they think the monster should say in the next video. Please send video or audio clips by Wednesday, December 9th. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you.